everyone and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Now this one we're going to be a little bit outside of Blender again. Something came to mind just before I was getting ready to do the whole exports import tutorial which will be the next topic now. Uh, I realized that it would be nice as well because we have some different materials. We've got metal, wood, different things like that. Uh, it would be nice to go into a little bit of detail on how we can actually reflect that inside of the game engines as well. Uh, and what I mean by this is if we were to use just the flat texture uh, as an example, I've brought the bucket into the Unreal Engine. So this is the model that we've been working on. This has, if we take a quick look at the static mesh, this has just the single material slot. Uh, and I realized that this could actually cause a little bit of an issue if people did want to show some kind of shiny material and flat wood on the same object in a single material slot. So usually what you could do if you wanted to accept those extra draw calls by having the separated material slots you would have a shiny material, you would have a flat material and things like that. But there's a way that we can get this across just using the textures and still using the same material for all of the objects. So this is the default result that you would get. So this has a little bit of shine on it, uh, but this is definitely not looking, as an example, the metal is definitely not looking metallic or reflective. Everything looks like it could have been made from the same material. And by that, I mean the uh, construction material, not the... Uh, material inside of the engine. With some simple tweaks to the textures that we have and bringing some extra content into the engine, we can get something that looks a little bit more like this though. And you can see now that the metal section actually has a little bit of a shine to it. Uh, it's a lot more reflective as are the nails. And then the wood is a little bit more flat than it was before. So it doesn't actually have any of the reflection or the kind of gloss that it looked like it had beforehand. We're still using the same material. I've just made some changes in the node itself. And I'm going to show you how we can get this effect by using some separate textures. So to achieve this, we need to be back in the 2D art asset of your choice. Like I've mentioned in the past, this can be something like GIMP, Photoshop. I'm going to be using Krita so that anyone who wants to follow along with a free package can follow along inside of Krita. Now, there's a little bit of theory to go into this, but really all we're going to be doing is applying the color white or black or somewhere in between to the sections that we want to either have gloss or no gloss. So to emphasize metallic, for instance, we want to have all of the squares that have some kind of metallic sheen to them. The highest level of metallic is represented by white and the lowest is represented by black. So if we were to make a metallic texture to fit into the metallic slot, then we're gonna want all of these. Uh, I'll just highlight them quickly with a red. So we're gonna want all of these wooden slots to be black to show that they have no metallic. And then all of these and that one there to be white to show that they have a higher metallic property to them. Now, if for instance, you wanted to keep, let's say the golden nails that I have, if these were to be slightly less reflective or metallic than the other metals that we're using, then you could use like a mid gray. So that's still a higher metallic value than black, but lower than white. So you can make that a, a mid to light gray and all of the other ones full white to get that same sort of result that I had in the Unreal project I just showed you. So what I would recommend doing is bringing in your original texture, the color grid, and we're just going to create a new layer on top of this. This is just to help us quickly visualize things so we know exactly where things are. Then all we really want to do is get the marquee tool, which inside of Krita is Control and R for the shortcut, or just select the option over here. And then I'm going to start by dragging over this section here. Now just to make this a little bit easier as so well, I'm gonna snap and show the grid, or at least just snap to grid so that we can get that exactly over those blocks just there. And the grid isn't exactly what I want it to be, so I need to make this 128 by 128. With those changes made, I can get just those wooden colors, and then I'm gonna use the fill tool. I'm gonna to fill these to be completely black because I don't want the wooden sections to have any metallic property whatsoever. I'm then gonna do the same thing for these down here. So I'm just gonna grab all of these sections. So these are the colors I know that I've designated to be the sections for the metal. I'm gonna press F again to get the fill tool back and I'm gonna change these to be completely white. So again, I'm just going for the very simple, everything is either fully metallic or not metallic. But like I said, if you wanted to play about with one of these squares to be a light gray or something, you can see the different results that you get when we test this out. I'm gonna go back to the marquee tool one last time just to get this square up here and make this fully white as well. Uh, and that is it really. So this is now uh, what I would call this if I export this, um, I would say that this is my metallic texture. And then of course, if you wanted to do the inverse for a roughness texture, then you'd want to make 
all of the metal colors. So all of the bits representing the metal side would need to be black and all of the wooden sides would need to be white to show the full roughness. Now I'm actually gonna do that with a little bit of shader maths inside of the Unreal Engine. You can do something very similar inside of Unity. So I'm actually just gonna keep one texture. And I'm gonna export this and call this the uh, metallic and roughness texture. I just noticed as well, I missed a little bit of the wood down here. So I'm just gonna grab the marquee tool again and just tidy this up. Okay, so with all of that done, with the new layer selected, I'm just going to export this, save it on the desktop, and I'm just going to call this one T underscore grid met rough for metallic and roughness. And of course, we're using all of the same properties as we did in the original export for the color grid. So we're going to save it as a PNG and leave it with the default values will be perfectly fine. That is really all that we need. So that is this video. We've now made our metallic and roughness texture, which does mean that we are fully ready to go and import everything into the game engines as planned. And that will all be separated into their own videos. So I'll leave that video here for today. As always, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps. And of course, to be kept up to date with all of the new videos and content coming to the channel, do hit the subscribe button and make sure to press the notification bell to actually get those updates. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.